Welcome to the Leader Mentality Show with Rob Clemens. Exciting show today. And I say I'm excited a lot, but today I got a guy who may bring it up another level or two <laughs> or three. Uh, so turn it on up and we're going to dive right in. Uh, first of all, we do want to thank our sponsors, the Greg Rolls Legacy Theater in North Myrtle Beach. Go check them out. Greg Rolls and his team are putting on such an amazing performance. Night after night, they have music, a venue that's nice and cozy with uh, just a, a few hundred chairs in there so everybody's close to the, to the main stage. Also another thing I love about Greg Roll's Legacy Theater, they are customizing the show so you can actually make a request on the show and hear what you want to hear. So wow. go check out the Greg Roll's Legacy Theater. Now today, however, we're going to talk a little bit about overcoming obstacles. Now, if you are in the business, if you are leading a sports team, I always talk like this, whatever you're leading, you could be a, a preacher leading a congregation, you could be in the Air Force right now, you're working on overcoming obstacles all the time to be your best. And I feel like that we all would be pretty foolhardy to think that we're going to go through any day of life, any stretch of life where we have no challenges. <laughs> <laughs> and, and one might say, even if you did, that would make life kind of boring. It's kind of like the analogy of if I'm playing Monopoly and I win every single time, do I even want to play it anymore? Right. And most people would say no. So I've got a guy on here. He, he's a special guy. I followed him a little bit. A lot of you know him. His name is Phil Jackson. He's the director of the Surf Dreams Foundation. Welcome to the show, my man. What's up, man? How are you? Man, I'm doing good. I'm doing good, man. It's so cool to have you on the show. Well, I know a lot of people me. follow you. Well, man, it's, it's my pleasure. First and foremost, I met you at this thing where we were at the SC Needs Help Barbecue. Tell me all about that, man. man. What a great event. You yeah. know, um, Andy Kemp and myself uh, saw an opportunity to help a lot of people in our community yeah. during the big hurricanes a few years ago, I think 2018. Yeah, um, you know everybody lost everything. You yeah, know, it, it was just it was devastating in our area, and it wasn't even the wind or the rain; it was the flooding. It you was know, the, Saka yeah. Stee was a mess. You couldn't even get to Saka Stee, and Andy had the warehouse, uh, the you know, the warehouse opportunity across from A and A Produce, mm. and he just started reaching out to people, and we started reaching out to people for toilet paper and just everyday essentials that people would need and all of a sudden there's tractor trailers pulling up like what? oh where are we gonna put all this you yeah know? so that's kind of where sc needs help and then started and then mike heisner carrie heisner uh marnie kennedy all came in Jarrett hux you mm -hmm. know jumped in with midtown he was putting people up at midtown for free wow you know? and so we were like wow this is really something let's kind of continue it and keep it going so that you know that's that's the kind of backstory with sc needs help and we started doing the barbecue, mm -hmm. you know, the smoke out at the boathouse. Yeah. And uh, Andy's a big barbecue guy and smoke out guy. Yeah, yeah. And so he, it was kind of his idea, and he's like, let's raise money. Let's do it. Mm -hmm. And we started with Andre Pope. Okay. Um, and then we wanted to raise money because Andre uh, had cancer, and the outlook wasn't good. Mm -hmm. And he, he wasn't going to make it. Um, and we were like, you know what? Let's do a party while he's here. Oh, yeah, I love that. A lot of people do benefits after someone passes. Mm -hmm. Like, let's let's do it while he's here, so he can see it, he can enjoy it. And that's exactly what we did. Mm. Whole town showed up, raised a bunch of money, um, paid off their home um, vehicles. Wow. So, and then shortly after Andre passed, his wife Heidi and his and their children were able to get through that mm -hmm. a little bit easier. It's never going to be easy. Nah. And it's the hardest thing. And I, I hope I never have to go through that. Um, but it was a little bit easier to, to do that. And then we, then that's just kind of the theme for the smoke out at the boathouse. And do you guys kind of pick like one person you're really trying to do every time or has it become more of a community? It's thing? more of a community yeah. thing. Um, we used to do that, but then we realized, Hey, we can help so many more people. Oh, just yeah. in 2023, we bought vehicles for people. We sent uh, some kids to Disney. Their father passed away. He was a mm -hmm. UPS driver, sent them to Disney, put a pergola up for, uh, for, um, for a lady who there's, they started the project and she got sick and they weren't able to finish the project so uh they, we sent a team over there to knock that out Man, so just so doing cool. stuff like that um and it, it's not like we're not there to like help pay your electric bill you're right, you know right, I mean? right, there's, right there's places like that for that um we're more intimate and we, it's about an experience i think yeah a lot of people uh, are going through a lot and Sometimes they just need a nice dinner and a and a weekend in Charleston. Yeah, no you know? doubt, no something, doubt. Something like that. Um, I mean, getting the guy the van. He was mm -hmm. able to take his kids to school. He was able to get to work. 
you know, and th those things like that really help. And we try to pinpoint how we can help in the best way possible, in the most efficient way possible Man. to get people back on their feet. Yeah. And not necessarily bail them out of, you know, a little rough patch because we've all gone through the rough yeah, patch. Yeah, sure, you sure, know, sure. I've had plenty of shut off notices on my front <laughs> door, you know, right, what I mean? and right. people has helped me through those as well. So we're not necessarily there for that. Uh, we're more there for getting you through some pretty major stuff. And, and I and I dig it because the thing is, you don't want to be seen as like, okay, well, now I need some more money. So now I'm going to go back to SC needs help again. Correct. This was meant to be that thing. Like uh, you can almost feel the community support and outreach. And there's a spiritual side of that. I'm not, you know, I'm not saying that was the basis or not, but I'm saying when you can lift somebody's spirit just by seeing that, wow, people do care about me. You 100%. know what I mean? That's a lot bigger well, than never, the money. You never know what someone else is going through. Yeah. And you've probably seen sick people before or people going through a rough time. It's a lot of it's mental. Yeah, for sure. And if they can get through that without the worry, um, a perfect example, a guy we know was battling cancer. Mm -hmm. And I went to see him and he was done. Mm. He was done fighting. You know, he still had fight in him. Yeah. But you can see it. That he was just done. He's just resigned. This was right before Christmas. Yeah. They have kids. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's just, he was just mentally done mm. well we took him a check went over there took him a check he's at almost in remission are you serious you know it's like that little stimulation was what he needed a hundred percent you know just to go okay i can get through christmas because you know there's a reason why there's mental health facilities and things like that because mental health will bring you down just like if you're sick in the hospital yeah. and you're like well i'm never gonna get out of here you know then you may not mm -hmm. but if you have a, if you're very opt you know the the optimism's there and you want to fight and you don't have that extra added stress on you yeah. it can really help so i saw it firsthand and i was like whoa you, to see it firsthand is such a like seeing is believing and, and look i think they're going to find out one day you know how scientists are always learning new things about the brain uh, i think we're going to find out one day that our brains control so much more than we realize yeah. when we're releasing this dopamine out when good things happen uh, we're getting that cortisol out of our body yeah. there the bad stresses are happening the good things happen yeah. to our bodies man so there's a reason why an athlete like goes on a roll yeah, yeah. you know that's, yeah. there's a reason why they score 50 points in a game you know in yeah. basketball it's it's not just because yeah they're good but once they get that stride yeah and yeah. they get mentally in the right place anything can happen man phil jackson coming with some knowledge here dude i love it well i, I like to tell this story uh, i was watching years ago you remember a baseball player named chipper jones yeah, yeah. He used to play with the braves, the braves. right and I, and I saw him coming up through the minors so i mean he was just such a, a great player but uh it, it was probably you know the last five years of his career uh they were talking about that uh one of his coaches said chipper's going through like a, an 0 for 25 batting streak and uh so he hasn't hit the ball in a while and he's getting a little bit later in his career and uh one of the players comes up and says, "Man, you'll get you'll you'll get another hit eventually." And Chipper goes, "I don't know, man." <laughs> and I guess the show, man, that you're talking about a Hall yeah. of Fame level yeah. baseball player. But when you're in the dumps, you're in it. You're like, I don't think I'm ever gonna get another hit yeah. again. You know, he's got three thousand hits or whatever. Yeah. But but that's and that's what people who like to help other people and entrepreneurs and yeah. business owners. When you're down, mm. you're way down. Yeah, you, you know, you've had bad days. You know, you've had days where like. Mm. Why am I doing this? Yeah. You know, d is this what I want to do? You have those days. And you just have to get yourself out of it. You know, man, before you get too far, because, man, you're dropping some knowledge I think people on the show need to hear. Look, it's tough, man, when you're in a leadership position. And I, and as anybody who listens to my show, I believe everybody should be a leader. So I'm, But I'm seeing when you're in a managerial position, when you're in a position where people are looking up to you, you're also going to have bad days. 100%. And and you're going to have that day where you're like, oh, you're questioning, but you don't want to let the team down, man. How do you get through that? It's tough, man. You can't you can't be the positive Facebook post guy every day. You know? <laughs> right, 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 um, right. Like, you can, but... The positive Facebook post guy, the guy bringing everybody up, yeah. you know, the guy always keeping the stoke alive has to have a bad day too. Right. You know? And sometimes you just got to step back and let people have their bad days. Mm -hmm. And I know my wife, God bless her, you know, so I'll be on a heater and she'll just be like, bro. Go surf. Go yeah. do something. You know what I mean? Just get out of here. Because she knows that's the stress. She knows release. that there's nothing she could say. Yeah or do to kind of get me out of that. Yeah. And I have those times and I have my hand in so many pots and um, 
between the production company and Surf Dreams Foundation and SC Needs Help and the family yeah. and, and everything else, I have I have days. Yeah, you know? I've heard you got a couple of things you got in the pot. So we're, we're, <laughs> hey, we're going to talk about that. And we're also going to talk about, you know, we start off this show talking about overcoming obstacles. I think you gave a sneak preview of what one of your tips might be, which is find something that gives you some internal peace and yes. go do it. Yeah. Um, so, But, but we're going to circle back to that. Before we get on, I want to talk some surf dreams foundation and and what that's all about but before we get into it i do want to tell you so i went to the smoke out at the boathouse and um it was it was great. As you know, that day I kind of got to run in, meet you real quick, felt the energy and the passion of what's going on in that whole environment. And um, two thoughts. Number one was when I went home, I smelled like the best taste in barbecue <laughs> ever, man. And all I could think about was barbecue for two straight days. I didn't even get to try it. But, uh, but so uh, it was a magical place. And the second thing is you told me you were trying to raise some money out there. What did you guys end up doing? We don't have the final number yet. Yep. Still waiting on some of the expenses to come through. But I think um, Andy, you know, Andy's our money guy. Yeah. I think he said uh, just under a hundred thousand dollars. My God, man! <laughs> so, I, hey, yeah, you, I mean, you the community. You know, good job. It's yeah. all the community. It's all you guys, man. Um, and you know, we're just a, we're just putting it together. Yeah, and, for sure. And once we open those gates, it's over. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> What's gonna happen is gonna happen. Oh yeah. Um, just you know, I do the chicken bog event and the macaroni and cheese cook off and stuff, and um, the all the lead up and all of that makes it so worth it. Once you open those gates, no doubt. And you see the kid with the ice cream and he's got it on his face. Yeah. Right. You know, or the kid over there petting the petting the goat or what? I don't even know what was over the petting zoo. Yeah, I, mean, I, I mean, you know, I'm, trip trip coming from the boathouse and and myself and every all the the other team. I think it was like 24,000 steps or something. Yes. You know, Trip had it on his phone. You got, yeah, you're, you're, yeah, yeah. You got it in for that I day. think I, I got two samples of barbecue. Nice. You know? right, right, right. I didn't really see, but I, you could just see the, the people and, yeah. the, and their faces and everybody come up to you. This is a great event. We love it. And yeah. All the cooks, win or lose, loved being out there. Man, so it, was, it, it was seriously like Disneyland for barbecue oh pork, man. I mean, because there was, there was a kid's area. There, there, there was just people walking around having a good time. And as I walked through, I was seeing all these influential people from the community like, hey, Rob, hey, what's up? And yeah. so and to me, I was like, this is just a great event. Uh, do you guys do that every year around the same time? Same time. Third, okay. I think it's the third weekend of March. Okay. So everybody circle that in your mm-hmm. calendars. But, yeah, for all sure. Right, well, well, cool stuff with that. Now, let's talk a little bit about Surf Dreams Foundation, yeah. man. Uh, uh, how did you found this thing and what was the purpose? Well, I was uh, just getting started in running surf contests. Mm-hmm. Our friend uh, Denny and Terry Green had the local ESA uh, mm-hmm. surf organization. Then they had the ASF mm-hmm. organization, the Atlantic Surfing Federation. And that's kind of when I came on, I wanted to get more involved in the surf contest scene. Mm-hmm. And I started noticing a need uh, for wetsuits. A okay. lot of kids didn't have wetsuits or couldn't afford the wetsuits. Uh, and it really started as a wetsuit drive. Mm-hmm. And we were like, all right, well, let's, everyone's got extra wetsuits in their garage. Let's just put that together and yeah. put something out there on social media and ask some people, well, we got garbage bags full of wetsuits. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, okay. Let's, how about surfboards? Who's yeah. got surfboards? And then, so we started giving away equipment. Mm-hmm. That's kind of how it started to kids in need. Well, we soon found out that, um, that you give away equipment, but they don't get used. Yeah, yeah. And then we were finding stuff in the pawn shops. Oh, okay. So okay. we we had to pivot mm-hmm. um, with Surf Dreams Foundation quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we were like, you know what? This is more about community. Yeah. And then we started doing trips and taking kids to Florida. We've taken kids to Puerto Rico, um, California, Dominican Republic. Mm. Uh, we have a spring annual spring break trip we just got back from. Uh, we think we took 18 or 19 kids and some families that nice. help out throughout the year, kind of a, a thank you to them. Yeah. Um, so it turned into community, it turned into trips, and it turned into just teaching kids everyday values, mm-hmm. um, how to you know how to speak to each other, how to uh, organize your stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, money management because when they they have to go to the store on these trips and buy their own food. Right. Uh, we take care of the, di- the the meals at night, but they have to go get their snacks and their breakfast. So and then it's all about kids meeting other kids. We have a surf team and we have like forty something kids on our surf Man. team from Maryland to Florida. Okay. And they might not see each other, but a couple times a year, but when they get together, they're together it's like a family reunion yeah, yeah for sure and we had a kid on our on our last trip who didn't know anybody mm. and by the end of the trip 
They're all best friends. They're hanging out together. Yeah. So it's a way to bring other kids together because, believe it or not, well, you know, whether we like it or not, I, would, I should say, society is really weird mm -hmm. with the kids meeting each other. Yeah. When we were kids, someone was playing basketball. You just rolled up and started playing basketball. Exactly. Yeah. They don't do that now. Okay. You know, if there's three kids hanging out on the boardwalk, you could just roll up there when we were kids and be like, hey, what's up? Yeah, you know, yeah. I'm Phil. Now they just walk right by and keep their head down there in their phone. It, it, mainly because they're, they're so glued to the phones. They're so glued to the yeah. phones, they just don't know how to interact with each other. So with Surf Dreams Foundation, that's what we try to do, mm -hmm. is just get them together. We, we can't do it for you, yeah, yeah, yeah. but we can get you guys in the same spot. So it, it's kind of like you're, you're taking kids and, and you're giving them, they have mutual interest in a sense, but you're, you're, you're developing socialization skills, Correct. things like that, yeah, right? 100%. Yeah. Not only for the kids, but for the parents as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I always tell this story. We had a, a couple that were on the verge of divorce mm. and the surf contests were the common denominator and wow. they were both be there well they ended up not divorcing oh man <laughs> and because you know they were spending so much more time at the surf contest yeah. and I, I don't know what was going on in their personal lives um i didn't you know dive that deep yeah but there was something there that wasn't bringing them all together as a right, whole. Right, right. And then the surfing thing kind of brought it together as a whole, and they saw how happy their kid was wow. surfing, mm. and which kind of brought back that. It like galvanized the family. A hundred percent. So just little things like that. Um, if we can, we're not going to change everybody. Yeah. You know, if we can make a difference. A, a day, whether it's opening a car door for somebody, opening a, a building door for somebody, Taco Bell, and you can tell the lady's just like over it. She yeah, hates her yeah. life, you know? Hey, thank you so much. Y'all are doing a great job. That little... Something like that. Yeah. You know, and then we try to translate like, that into the Surf Dreams Foundation. So Surf Dreams isn't about just one thing. It's mm -hmm. about community. It's about, you know, just getting people together and... Just letting people know, hey, no matter what you're going through, there's somebody here that's that's stoked. They, on they you. cares. They cares. Man, oh um, wow. Can, and can that's I, with, that's can, with anything. I want to throw in something on that. You know, there, I was doing a uh, speaking event the other day, and I and I pulled out something called the Mother Teresa effect. I don't know if you ever heard of this, but it's after the Mother Teresa, of course. And um, they they had done a study. It was an actual uh, documented study where they showed that people that watched Mother Teresa helping kids in Calcutta. Uh, they actually were following up with these people, and they found that the ones that had actually just witnessed it had a boost in their immunity. It was wow. an immune system boost. And we talk about the power of the brain, right? We talk about the good things that happen within your body when you see positivity. I believe, just like you're saying, that little, that one kindness that you show each day. You may not immediately receive it back when you give it to somebody, but you're you're changing that tide. 100%. Man, that's super cool. I have an addictive personality, you yeah. know, and... Um, I love helping people. Yeah, and I mean, I don't have I don't have much. Yeah, I don't have much at all. Yeah, yeah. but I've set myself up to where I don't need much. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I got lucky in the housing market, and I bought my house for ninety thousand mm. dollars. You know, so <laughs> yeah. that wasn't in two thousand twenty four. <laughs> that wasn't in two thousand twenty four. So, right. but if I didn't, and if I feel so bad for people, because if I had that big mortgage, mm -hmm. I would not be able to do this. It would be a tough, no way I would be able to do this, man. Let's, let's jump in. So man, it, very cool stuff, man. I love hearing about the surf dreams foundation. I think that's part of the reason you were such a great candidate for the leader mentality show, because that's leadership. You know, how, how do we change free people for the better? And with the right intuition of what people need, because I believe altruism is at the base of all leadership, altruism being that I'm going to put your interest ahead of my own. Right. I, and, and I think that's really cool. So power, stuff brother I appreciate all that well, right well let's on, man. let's get into a little bit about how you got here in the first place because you don't just wake up one day and start something as ambitious as this so <laughs> how does the young Phil Jackson get to where he's at well you know I moved here from Ohio and I think I don't even know I was six seven five I don't know yeah I was <laughs> somewhere young. in there uh, yeah you know our first grade mm -hmm. what um and my dad retired he was he was an older gentleman mm -hmm. and my wife um I mean, his wife, my mom. <laughs> he got married young. <laughs> I got married young, five years old. Uh, my mom. When you know, you know, Phil. <laughs> yeah, my mom and dad traveled here a lot. Yeah. And they, they loved it here, so they ended up retiring here. And I was, I remember it just like it was yesterday. I was walking down the street, and I saw a surfboard mm. on a guy's uh, outdoor shower. We grew up in Oceanside Village down in Surfside. Yeah. Beach 
gated beach community, you know, um, the extravagant trailer park. I yeah, yeah very it. much. Yes, um, yes, yes. And I was like, whoa, surfboard. And I saw mm -hmm. some guys down there surfing. A guy named Greg Nichols. We're still friends to this day. Yeah. It's crazy. But um, I was like, I want to do that. Mm -hmm. So I went and was like, hey, what about that surfboard? Because it kept sitting there. And I had to... Uh, I had to mow his grass and do a couple other things for him. You know, he wanted 25 bucks or do this. And now I look back, I'm like, shoot, bro, I should have just got the 25 Take the 20 bucks. bucks. <laughs> yeah. right. I think I worked on that 25 bucks all summer. But, and I just went out and went surfing. Yeah. You know, I was terrible. I hated it. The board wasn't the right board. I was scared to death. You know, but I just kept at it and, and ended up loving surfing. And everything was surfing. Now, before we get too far, explain that to me. Because you know, I thought you were going to tell me the story and it would sound something like, I got on and I couldn't ever get off. But but you didn't like it immediately? No, I hated it. So why'd you stay with it? Just because it was cool. <laughs> and I, like, I liked being out there. Right, right. But I was like, man, this sucks. Yeah, because yeah. Because basketball, you can, hit a, you can hit a basket, you know, your first time ever picking up a basketball. Yeah. That's not the case with surfing. You're getting your <laughs> ass kicked over and over and over and over. Yeah. And these kids now, you know, we have the surf school and they have the soft tops and mm -hmm. the instructors. And it's so easy just to stand up, get the picture, and you're a surfer. Right, right. It wasn't like that growing up. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, I, I, that was in the, you know, early 80s. Mm -hmm. I can only imagine what the guys went through in the 60s and 70s and, mm -hmm. and beyond. Right. You know, those guys, God, those guys are legends, man. Yeah. The, the, the equipment they were on. But I stuck with it, and then I stood up. And I was like, oh. Oh, okay. Now, now this is the Here good we go. stuff. So it was everything was surfing for yeah. me. And we didn't grow up with a lot of money. I didn't have the cool board shorts. And I didn't have, you know, my parents got what they could for me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just like everybody else around here, my first board was a perfection surfboard. Well, my first was a season, but my first real surfboard custom was a perfection. I think I bought one of Stony Canner's old boards. Mm. Um, and... And, you know, just it kind of went from there. And then yeah. I started competing. And at 13, I lost my sister to suicide. Oh, she was 17 wow. years old and she still lived in Ohio. Um, and I was just living the dream. And that happened. Mm. And I remember coming back from surfing and seeing my mom on the kitchen floor with a phone, just, mm. you know, the old wall phones, yeah, yeah. you know, dangling over her shoulder and she was just done. Oh. And I was like, what in the wow. world? And then, you know, they were forced to tell me what happened. At that point, my life changed. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't identify that until later in my life, that that's where everything changed. But I was a complete asshole. Yeah. I was getting in fights in school. I failed the sixth grade. I went to sixth grade twice, not because of academics, just mm -hmm. because I was like, I'm over life. Yeah. I'm over all this. And, you know, people suck. You know, people mm -hmm. would... would would talk crap and they found out about like, oh, you should die like your sister, you know, because, Man. but it was my own fault because I was an asshole. Right, right. I, I was not a nice person and that went through middle school. I was terrible in middle school. And then I, I found basketball and I started playing basketball and I got the middle school team and then rec team and went to high school and um, played ninth grade basketball in high school and then I found weed. Oh boy. Yeah, and I was like, <laughs> whoa, you know, like, and I lived in Oceanside Village, which was very transient in yeah. the summertime. That's Saturday to Saturday, a bunch of weekly rentals. Mm -hmm. So you could, you know, once I got old enough, I started getting into some stuff in there. But when I found weed, and I was like, oh, I could sell this and make money? Mm. This is amazing. Now, I worked at the Conk Cafe as a dishwasher. Dude, I was getting like two bucks or whatever right, they paid right. then. You know, uh, I think everybody around here worked at the Conk Cafe as a dishwasher <laughs> when they were 15. But um, uh, I found weed. And mm -hmm. I was like, uh oh, this is this is awesome, you know. And I started selling weed. I like the way you say that too. Uh oh, this is awesome because yeah. it's kind of like, yeah, I yeah, know what you mean. yeah. And then I got to the middle of tenth grade, and I was like, uh, I'm not going to school anymore. Right. So I dropped out, mm. you know, in tenth grade. And then um, I met a friend of mine named Shamrock, and he was a rapper. And then I was like, wow, that's cool. Yeah. And let me try to rap. I was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> terrible. Were, were, I was like, I, there was no way I needed to be rapping. You know what I mean? I was terrible. And then I started DJing, and I was really good at DJing. And then I got good at rapping. And then, next thing I know, I'm the resident DJ at the After Deck. Oh, okay. I'm the resident DJ at Icon. Okay. I'm, I'm on stage, and we're opening up for Wu-Tang at the House of Blues. <laughs> Unbelievable, you know, man. That's I'm like, legendary. I'm like... Holy crap, you know, and... Now, now, before we get too far off this, what would you say your rapping skill was similar to? Because, uh, you, you know, were you the method man? Were you the... It, because... 
you know, I, I let he you was know. the more the lyricist, and I yeah. was like the hype guy. Okay, all right. My, gotcha. my bars were terrible. You know, like I, I wasn't metaphorically inclined. I, my vocabulary sucks. I dropped out in the tenth grade, and I was a surfer. But I knew how to get the crowd hype. It would be funny if all your rap songs were about surfing, bros. <laughs> yeah. When you're out on that, kind of- <laughs> yeah, you know. But it, there's there's something. He was the lyricist. I mean, he was he's a genius. Yeah. And he made all the beats and everything else. And I was just the guy's like. Who's high? You know? And everybody's like, yeah. I'm getting, I'm getting a, a shot from off screen. Uh, were you the flavor flave of kinda, uh, the kind of, kinda, you know? Um, but with, with that territory comes a lot, a lot of other stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. There was a lot of stuff just thrown at us. And then I found cocaine. Mm-hmm. I didn't like it. I just liked the way it smelled. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> right, right. Um, so I, I got on that and then had my first kid. I, he's 21 now. I'll do the math. I don't know. I was like 21, 22 years mm-hmm. old. And that yeah, didn't work out with his mom because, you know, um, it just, it wasn't, it didn't yeah. work out. You know, it wasn't the right thing for me. And um, I was not the best person. And I was just DJing and doing drugs. And then I found meth. Mm-hmm. And then I found crack. And all of a sudden, ne- next thing you know, I'm I'm hustling major weight in mm-hmm. this town, you know, and I'm mm-hmm. making a lot of money. I would, my bar tab would be four or 500 bucks a night at the bar wow. and it was nothing, yeah. you know? So that's, that was, that was my whole life. Making music, DJing, rapping, doing shows. We played out four or five nights a week regionally and doing drugs. Mm. That was my life. And yeah. then I met my wife, my current wife and she was doing, you know, dope with us. And she's like, we, can't do this anymore you know like you're getting way too deep mm. and um so i think she got pregnant with with anthony my 18 year old and she sat with me at the kingfisher inn in garden city for a week and detoxed me wow um i lost everything yeah you know yeah. i went from the very top to the very bottom i burned everybody in this town i owed everybody money mm. i was just a user at that point yeah yeah um Moved to Charleston, DJ down there for a couple, you know, four or five months. Moved back. I burned a dude down there. And, you know, I just burned a lot of people, man. Mm-hmm. And it sucked. Um, she detoxed me um, a week. It was bad. It mm-hmm. was really bad. I don't even really remember. It. Yeah, I can imagine. Um, something I like to try to block out. Yeah. But I like to talk about it because maybe it'll help somebody else. Yes, 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 yes. So, you know, fast forward to where we're at now. I tried to mend all the, you know, all the bridges that I burned and try to just be a better human, try to figure out me mm-hmm. for, for once, just try to figure out me. And then I realized that, uh, you know, I, I like helping people. Mm-hmm. And I was um, in a management role at Mellow Mushroom for eight years. So that really got me over the hump. You know, shout out to Matt Duke and the crew over at Mellow Mushroom for giving me a chance. But that got me back to the real world. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know, a leadership role. Uh, how to you know how to treat people and how to talk to people and how to manage yeah, things yeah. like that, which got me to my entrepreneurship, uh, kind of bridged the gap for there. I'm with you, and let and, and let me ask you this: you know, you talked about finding yourself. You know, you go through this huge, huge change. I mean, I, I can say to never been through it, it's hard to relate to. I hope that the people who are maybe in the middle of it before they've had that chance to detox, I hope they can see some light in you. Hope the people who are going through it right now get the spirit to pass through right. it. I've never had experience, so it's hard. I would like to know from you, you know, you talk about finding yourself. You're coming off almost like a, like, what are, where do we go from here? And you said you found that you love helping people how does that come about? I mean, how did you find this? It just happened, yeah. you know? And I didn't know where I wanted to be with my life. Mm-hmm. I was just in disarray. Yeah. I was, we were making some decent money at the restaurant. My wife was making decent money doing what she does. She's a server. Yeah. And we were kind of getting ourselves back on track. Yeah. And um, I just, I don't know, with, with, with the surf contest, and I can't really pinpoint when I was like, oh, I like helping people, yeah. but it just makes me feel good to help other people, even when you don't have anything. Right. You still, I mean, it wasn't but maybe six years ago that I had $32 in my pocket in yeah. January trying to figure out how to feed three kids at home. Man, and that's you know? real. And yeah. that's real. Yeah. And that wasn't that long ago. Yeah. And I'm still not, you know, I'm still not uh, financially set to where I want to be, you yeah. know. Um, I can pay my bills. But it's still a grind every single every single month. It's yeah. still a grind. Yeah. Um, but I was at that point, 
and you just had to keep going. And I was still liked helping people. Mm -hmm. And the more and more you see other people um, kind of get over some things and knowing that you had a hand in that mm -hmm. is, is something. It's really something, man. Well, it, it kind of looks like it, it's the basis of a lot of what you're doing today. I mean, you've, you've got so many things where you're you're helping somebody with a hand up. And and when we talk about hand up, it's a different than a hand down. Yeah. You know, a hand up is, hey, let, let's yeah. let's let's go to your next destination. So I think where I'm at now is yeah. is I had zero. Mm -hmm. So now I have two. So if you give, if I give you one, I still have one more than I had. Yeah, there you go. I like you see that. what I'm saying? Sure, I, sure, sure. Someone told me that I respect a lot. They said you can have anything in this world that you want if you help enough people get what they want. Mm -hmm. Still don't really know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> but it sounded really but it sounded, good. But but I kind of get it. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, and and that's just I, I always remember that. Mm -hmm. And if I have it, you can have it. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, and if I don't have it, I can help. I'll help you get it. You mm -hmm. know? Um, first and foremost, I want to make sure that my family is, is taken care of. Yep. Um, yep. First and foremost. But like I said, if we can help some people along the way, then it's amazing. It's a, it's a net win for sure. Because I, I got helped yeah. a lot. I still get helped mm -hmm. to this day. I still get help from people and uh, people help me out. And, you know, my friend Tommy P, which is the VP of Surf Dreams, an amazing person. Mm -hmm. He got everybody together and did like a 10 year anniversary video for Surf Dreams because Surf Dreams oh. just turned 10. Oh, man. He did well that. Done. A couple of years ago, he got everybody together. And they got me a surfboard. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. I can get surfboards, you know, right, I, I want right. surfboards, but the, the, they did it and it was very special. And I still have that board. It, it hangs. I'll never get rid of that board because it's very special to me. So, there's always people there, no matter how, no matter how financially set you are, or you know your businesses are doing well. You're always going to need a hand, and there's always going to be people there to give you a hand. But if you can pass that down, more, you know, the the give is more than the take. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's really important. Well, there, there's there's uh, so many takeaways that I get when I'm hearing all this, but but I'll I'll tell you that I think of the fact that there's kids who came through um, your your foundation, who came through the school, whatever it may be, that you may have changed for the better that you don't know about. That you don't know. You know, it's kind of funny yeah. how that works. You know, sometimes we're going through life and and we're we're doing what we're doing, and you don't realize that somebody has been inspired by something that you may not hear from because some people are less likely to talk about it, or, right? Or they they don't like to brag about things. So it's just got to be a cool experience. What? So with you guys having been doing this for 10 years, you must have, what, what are the like the youngest kids that are coming to your, to your, uh, your surfing? Well, like our flagship event, Take a Kid Surfing Day, yeah. it's our free surf clinic. It's over a hundred kids and we do it several times a year. Yeah. Um, we, we encourage them four, four years old, three, wow. four years old. Okay. Um, they don't really have to go out and surf. Yeah. It's just more getting them comfortable with the water. There you go. Okay. Um, that's the biggest hurdle with the beach. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Number one, sharks. Mm, oh, and we're like, no, we take them all out <laughs> before you guys get here. You didn't know. Yeah. Oh, no. yeah, that's good. We, we told them to come back later. And they're just old enough not to ask you how you did that. Okay. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's like the, you know, the, you know, Santa Claus, right, right. Um, but that's the number one. And the second is them getting hit by waves. Mm -hmm. And then they get knocked down. They go underwater. They turn around. They don't know which way is up. It's yeah. really two seconds. But I've been in that position. It feels like a month. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know? So um, that's, that's really at that age is where you make or break that. Mm -hmm. And it takes someone that knows what they're doing. Yeah. Because parents can't see under, you know, under toes, rip currents. If it's drifty and windy, they'll send their kid out on a boogie board. And mm -hmm. the next thing you know, he's way down the beach. Yeah, and the kid yeah. doesn't really understand. He just knows that he's, it's not good. It's not good. Yeah, yeah. And then so they're like, oh, we don't want to go back in the ocean. Right. So the younger you can get them to us, um, or any, you know, anybody who is familiar with the ocean, the mm -hmm. younger you can get it, we put them on boogie boards and ride behind them with mm -hmm. a boogie board just to get them acquainted. And then when we get close to the shore, we might dump them off the board. Okay. And let them get rolled a little bit, yeah, you know, yeah, but yeah. we're right there to pick them up just so they can feel that. You like, gotta oh, get okay, it. we're good. Yeah. Um, so the younger, the better with surfing and the ocean. And, but we also have dudes that are like fifties and sixties surfing for the first time. Wow. Like, well, that is awesome. Man, that's gotta be pretty cool. Oh my too, God. Man. It's great. You it's know? just somebody they've never really had the chance, you know, and, and, and you're, so you're always helping somebody like try something new. Let me ask you this. I'm going to, I'm going to jump into some surf. I've got a surfing expert. I need to ask some surfing <laughs> questions. So what would you say are, 
And let me set the stage properly. If I'm looking for an NFL quarterback, I would say you need to have great vision. You have to have uh, ability to read a defense. You have to have a strong arm. To be a great surfer, tell me about some of the characteristics of a great surfer. Have fun. Okay. First and <laughs> right. foremost, is okay. long, you know, the best surfer in the world is one, the one having the most fun. Yeah. That's what they say, right? But, um, you know, uh, physical fitness mm-hmm. is a big one. I mean, yeah. you can, can tell by me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> super no, no. fit. If he, if he lifts his shirt up now, perfect washboard abs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But um, endurance, you burn more calories in an hour surf session than you can do in the gym in three or four hours. No kidding. No, 100%. Wow. Because okay. you're moving, you're using so many different muscles. Man, yeah, yeah. And so many different body parts. So fitness is one. Mm-hmm. Um, not having the fear of the ocean yeah. or water period is right. another one. I still have that anxiety. Yeah. Um, at, you know, 44 years old, I still have the anxiety mm-hmm. of, of big surf. Um, and just just respect for Mother Nature. Yeah. And surfing is, is just as much in your head and, and a vibe as it is a physical sport. Mm-hmm. Um, and surfing can be a team sport. Surfing can be an individual sport. But one thing you will notice about surfers is 90% of the surfers, maybe 95% of the surfers are really calm yeah. people. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. they're really just kind of go with the flow people. Okay, okay. They'll sleep on a couch, they'll sleep on a floor, they'll sleep in the Hilton, it doesn't matter. Right. You know, um, they they all have the same goal. Mm-hmm. Go get some surf. All right. Find, the, like best, find the best waves, you know. And then there's nothing better than surfing, especially in the evening. Yeah. Surfing with your friends. Cracking a beer, or in my case, a White Claw. Yeah. <laughs> uh, on the beach access right. with the sun setting. Yeah. You know, on this nice summer day. That's just, it's, it's peaceful. It's just, it's just a part of inner peace. Um, so, talking about great attributes of a surfer, let's talk about greatest surfer of all time and why. Oh, wow, that's tough. Yeah. Um, for me and my generation, Kelly Slater. Oh, yeah. He's um, famous. Yeah, he's famous. Um, grew up in Florida. Mm-hmm. And he has a really cool story yeah. from when he was younger. You know, um, he spent his younger days traveling, sleeping on people's couches, mm-hmm. you know, uh, back of cars, uh, you know, the back. I've rode at Outer Banks in the back of a pickup truck before. It's like doing it for the love of yes. it, first and, and foremost. And he yeah. was a phenom. I mean, they saw it, you know, Matt Keckley and those guys down at Quiet Flight and stuff saw, saw it from the beginning. Yeah. Um, the, the guys over at Eastern Surf Magazine, they all saw it from the beginning. Like, this is, nice. this guy's got something Yeah, special. he's the, yeah. Yeah, and he just surfed uh, his last world tour event wow. um, two days ago. Man. Um, so he uh, he's having a child. He's mm. in his upper 50s, mid, mid-upper 50s. I don't okay. know exactly how old he is. Yeah. 11 world titles. Um so you know he he to me he's the, he's the goat. Yeah. Um, and then you got guys like Tom Curran, which was kind of before him. He's mm-hmm. the, you know there's a lot, but Kelly Slater in my book is uh, is great. And you know with what I do for a living and running surf contests all up and down the East Coast and Caribbean, I've got to witness it firsthand. Um, mm. Got to see him free surf in Hawaii. Yeah. And, yeah. and uh, it's like watching Pele play soccer, a, Jordan play basketball. The you things know? he does on a surfboard, yeah. it's just and just his whole preparation and his mindset mm. and his daily routine it's just it's it's a phenomenal this can be a tough one but have you ever seen a kid come through uh, like a kid that you've seen like a younger one that you're like oof, this guy could be one of those next special ones come through your place or otherwise right now we have a guy uh uh he's a little older but mm-hmm. his name's owen moss okay and well he's a very good friend of my son He's been doing all of my surf contests, amateur surf contests, mm-hmm. and now he just made the Challenger Series, which is like the minor leagues for okay. baseball. Nice. And now, you know, the major leagues is next. Uh, but the guy can't miss right now. Really? But he he is so mentally focused, mm-hmm. and he's the nicest person in the world. Right, know? right. His, his post-heat interviews are insane. <laughs> so good. Yeah. Doesn't have a major sponsor. Yeah. Um, you know, he just... He's good, man. And that's... he's he's on he's on that he's on that level right now. And then there's a couple other younger kids coming up on okay. the east and west coast that that you, you know got, keep a good eye on. Yeah, there's this girl. She's really young. Story Martinez. Yeah, uh, she's really good. And um, for for like the real young ones, uh, she's going to be something to watch. And man, the girls right now. Wow. Yeah, just yeah. just coming up to another level. Huh? They are insane good. Wow. Right now, you know, then that's attributes to the families and the coaches and stuff. Yeah. The, 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 the level of the amateur female surfing right now is, is the best I've ever seen it. Wow. And I've been in the game, you know, running events for a while. I run 32 surf contests a year. Mm-hmm. I, I see them um, 
from all ages and all the way up to the World Surf League. And right now, the females, game over. Do, 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 you, do you think that there's somebody that they're aspiring to beat? Now, let me, let me say why I'm asking that. You know, I look at Caitlin Clark, who just came through the NCAA Women's Tournament. She has set the college basketball world on fire, not just women's either. We're talking about men's and women's. Yeah. And I can see a lot of young women out there aspiring to be the next Caitlin Clark, yeah. and that tends to stimulate things. Is there anybody that these that, that you think these girls are seeing there? Yeah, they, for sure. Yeah. There's a couple. Caroline Marks from, okay. from Florida. Yeah. Um, she's already won a world title. Mm. She surfed uh, a few of our events, amateur events in Florida. I remember walking over the sand dune when she was like nine. Wow. And seeing her surf, I'm like, who's that guy? <laughs> You know? yeah. I was like, holy crap. They're like, that's Caroline Marks. I'm like, what? Yeah. She's so good. And then now we got um, Katie Simmers from from California. Yeah. And she made the world tour and and declined the invitation their first year. Wow. Man. <laughs> People worked their whole life to make it there. Yeah, yeah. She's like, no, I'm good. She's like, well, I'll wait till next year. Yeah. Um, but, you know, those two, there, there's a lot. There's a ton. Sure, sure, There's a sure. ton. But, I, you know, Katie Simmers and Caroline Marks, I think the young girls really like them. And Carissa Moore... She's mm -hmm. an Olympian. Yeah. Uh, amazing person. A lot of girls look up to her because she does a lot of the, uh, like at the Supergirl Pro in Jacksonville, one of the events that I announce, um, she does the Chris and Moore experience. Okay. So the girls get to come. Yeah, yeah. Not only surf with her, but they go hang out. They watch movies. They have pizza. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? She's yeah. just, Carissa is there. You know, she's not like the elusive surfer right, that right. we're like, we know they're at the event, but we don't ever see them. Carissa might pull up at the taco spa. Yeah. She might pull up at the, you know, we got a guy, Coach Motes in Florida. He does a big event for everybody. She'll pull up there and hang out, you know. So She's a person of the she's people. a hundred percent. Look, man, I mean, I'll tell you what I love so much about this, and, and I'm glad we went down this route as we get towards the back end of the show, because there might be the greatest surfer of all time sitting at home right now they're five six years old they it, they would they may never know that they're the greatest surfer right. of all time it's not even a chance until somebody says hey try this opportunity out so i love yeah. that you're blazing these paths for people and you're giving them a chance to experience something because that greatest surfer of all time imagine when they get that great feel on knowing they're really great at something yeah, and they're better sure. than it, you know so that's a powerful thing yep. man let me ask you one more surfing question and then we're going to start uh you know, kind of getting down the, the the block towards our obstacles best place you ever surfed to me, the Outer Banks of North Carolina okay. have a very special place in my heart. Yeah. You go over, I don't know if you've ever been there, but you go over the Oregon Inlet Bridge, mm -hmm. and I feel like everything just disappears. Right, right. You know? That's um, cool. My son lives up there in Buxton now. But between there and the, the left at Enclintro in Dominican mm. Republic. Oh, yeah. Um, I've recently found Dominican Republic, uh, been more on my radar. There's been guys that's been pioneering that place forever. Yeah. Made a connection. Uh, the, uh, the guys at Carambola Surf House down there kind of brought me and his family. Okay. I do a couple events down there a year. We do some, a lot of give back stuff. We take, anytime we go, we take a bunch of boards and stuff. Right but on. they have a left point break there. Mm. That suits me. I'm not a huge paddler, <laughs> but you can walk on the reef. Yeah. You can paddle out without having to duck, the duck dive a bunch of big waves and get your hair wet. It's a, it's Disneyland for me. Yeah, you're right. I love that place. When, it, when it's on, yeah. I love that place. So East Coast, the Outer Banks. I love Florida too, Sebastian. Great place. But Outer Banks and Dominican Republic has just got a special place yeah. in my heart. I love it. And not only for the wave, but for the people. Fair enough. Best surfing movie of all time. Last one. <laughs> North Shore. <laughs> Okay, all no, right, good. Sure. Oh, because if you said something like, what was the Kate Bosworth movie from years ago? Oh, She's I can't Blue remember. Crush? Yeah, Blue I can't remember. I was going to say, if you said Blue Crush, I was going to have to uh, immediately uh, question Nor you. It, like an actual Hollywood movie, North, I mean, North okay. Shore and Big Wednesday. <laughs> you know, I love Big Wednesday, but North Shore, just the scene, the guys you looked up to in the movie playing these crazy roles, like they <laughs> took them to Hollywood and dropped them off in the parking lot type shit, you know? <laughs> it's like, come on, this is great. You know, it's amazing. So. This from a real surfer, you can see the inspiration here. All right, well, listen, we, we started this show talking about overcoming obstacles. So, Phil, I, I appreciate you being so forthcoming today. You talked about some of your obstacles in life and, and how you came through them. And, and I hope people got that message that there is always a better tomorrow. Tell me a couple of things that you recommend people do when they're trying to overcome their own obstacles. Just stay focused. Mm -hmm. You know, stay focused. Um, if there's someone in your life that loves you, if you're having a bad day, try not to take it out on them, mm -hmm. you know, and try to um, try to help somebody every day. 
even though you're going through the worst times of your life, try to help somebody, whether it's a smile, mm -hmm. a thank you, an extra tip, you know, on, on a bill, mm -hmm. um, holding the door from somebody, grabbing some groceries for the old lady at Walmart parking yeah, lot that's yeah. kind of struggling with her cart. Right. Anything like that, grabbing two carts from the parking lot at the grocery store, you would not believe, you know, how how that does for your mental. Wow. Just doing something so simple that people just walk by. Mm -hmm. um, I try to, every single day, I try to, you know, I try to do something positive. Um, I keep a stack of stickers in the car. I see some kids skateboarding. Mm -hmm. I'm like, hey, here's some stickers. Yeah, you yeah. Know, just anything that you can do to brighten someone's day, because you never know what the next person is going through. You're going to run into people who just hate life, mm -hmm. you know? And those are the ones that need the positive reinforcement for that day. Cause yeah. you never know. Maybe she, you know, you, you got the, the lady at Starbucks or whatever, and she's just not, not in a good mood. Mm -hmm. You know, she's not a Karen, mm -hmm. you know, she's not a bitch. Um, maybe she broke down on the way to work. She had yeah. a flat tire or her kid stick this morning and she did, had to scramble for a babysitter, anything. That's I mean, fair. it could be a million things. Yeah. You never know what someone else is going through. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, with me too, I have to find myself. I'm like, all right, I have to smile today. You know? Yeah, yeah. Because I'm having a terrible day, but um, it's a lot of it's all it's all mental, man. And I have mental, ooh, I have mental challenges. Yeah. Uh, the past two years have been brutal for me mentally. I've mm -hmm. had mental breakdowns. You know, um, doing what I do. You, you have people that love what you do. You have people that hate what you do. Mm -hmm. um, you have to deal with both of them. Yeah. And just uh, stay in the course. Mm -hmm. And doing what you know is best for you and your family and uh, helping people along the way. If you do those things, I believe that you can get through anything. I, I think that those are actually three really good takeaways because you start off with one earlier. Um, so I'm going to go back through them for anybody who is listening. So you had focus, stay focused. You have a goal. Um, and we talk about this all the time. Write down a goal if you need to. Write it on the board. I want to be the greatest surfer ever. I want to be the greatest manager of my place. I love place. that. God, yeah. I love that. Yeah. Look look at it. Focus on it. Don't ever lose that vision. because and not a goal for this week. Yeah. not No. This is a make it make the goal that something you got to attain over a period of yeah. time but when you have that that's your map to success so don't let anybody take you off of that um, think about your family think about the people you care about do something nice I love that um, it's the hardest thing in the world look the easiest thing in the world to do is when somebody has done something that made you mad to go and do something uh, in anger but think about a different way what could I turn around to do something positive and not just feel the effects of positivity in you but for the person you help that's magical yeah. and I'm gonna use your your first one that you said earlier you know find something that brings you peace um, whatever that happens to be I love working out you know it could be surfing it could be reading but but just take Take five minutes if that's all you got. Yeah. And find that place of peace. And take the time. Yeah. yeah. Take the time. Don't I wait until you overflow. I struggle with that. Right. You know, right. I, we do, I'm a cruise junkie. Yeah. We do a couple cruises a year. Um, and the last one, I'm like, this is a working cruise. I have, I have these huge events coming up. Yeah. I have to work on this cruise. But sometimes you just need to be like, all right, today, it's me. Yeah. You yeah. know? kids everything else like it's me today guys yeah you know you Gotta have do to do that and if you're married and you have kids or even if you don't have kids and you've got really you know stressful jobs and a really busy life take the time to go to dinner take yeah. that time personal time take the trip you know i yeah. always say like you can't take the money with you, man. Take the trip. If you're thinking about booking the trip, book the trip. You're going to be thankful for that. And that could be that rejuvenation, man. A hundred percent. You have to have that, especially with a relationship. You know, my wife is my biggest supporter and we look at it as a business, a team, mm -hmm. you know, like this is our, this is our family. Um, but we also have to take that time man. just to, just to put it down. I'm notorious for sitting on the computer till midnight. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Knocking stuff out. You know, I can't, I can't shut it off, but yeah. You know, <laughs> but you got to do it. Yeah. Well, look, man, I mean, that's a great place to leave off. And, and I'm actually going to leave off with that one. Um, when all the smoke settles, look at the people who have cared for you from the beginning. Um, the ones that are still with you through the thick and thin and never forget them. If you're at work and you put in your 80 hour work week, we'll do it for your family for right. sure. 100%. But don't forget to spend the time with the family in the first place. So uh, we all can keep that track as part of our goal. too. Yeah. So, man, listen, I loved having you on the show, Thanks, brother. Dude, you got 
Appreciate good stuff. It. Thank you so How much. How can people find you, man? Um, yeah, you guys can check us out at surfdreamsfoundation.org or anything on social media, Surf Dreams Foundation. My personal is Belly Slater Official. Okay. Um, that's uh, you know on all social platforms, so just check us out. All right, that's great stuff. Well, listen, man, thank you again. You are Thanks, the man. man. This is a lot it. of fun. We'll have you back on again. And everybody, we hope you got some good value today on overcoming obstacles, all this great stuff with the Surf Dreams Foundation and everything else he's doing. Thank you again to our sponsors, the Greg Rolls Legacy Theater. Go check them out. Great shows nightly. Also, we want to thank the Leaders List members for being some of the best leaders in the industry. Check us out on Facebook, too. Make sure to like and share us with your friends. And we'll see you all next time on the Leader Mentality Show with Rob Clements.